Worthy, isn't he? Amen. Good to have everybody here. Praise the Lord. How, how y'all enjoying the, the heat? Y'all liking it? Yeah, a lot better than the cold, of course. Better than the snow. Yeah. So the next couple days will still be good too. When it's in like the 90s and high humidity, and you're still you're good. You don't like that. You're good with that. Brian's good with that. Right, you're good with that. All right, good deal. Tomorrow's definitely going to be a pool day or Sunday or Saturday or whatever it is. So as warm as it's going to be, it's going to be. So praise the Lord. Hey, I just want to encourage everybody. Uh, I think most of you were here last year. Uh, but if not, just want to just remind everybody uh, that we, you know, did go through that series, Have I Forgot the Why? Do you guys remember that? Have I forgot the why? And uh, the why was, you know, why do I do what I do as a believer? Why do I do, uh, why do I come to church and all that? So do you guys remember, uh, do you remember the four things we talked about? What was the number one reason? What? Have I forgot the why when it comes to what again? The word, right? The word is the, word is the number one reason why we all gather together, why we all come together. Number two was what? Right, worship, right, praise and worship, right? We are coming here to focus on God, worship Him, love on Him, amen. Number three was what? Serving, serving right, serving. Serving is number three, that we're coming here not just to sit, but to be able to serve, right? To be involved and to serve one another with our gifts and talents, because everybody's got gifts and talents, right? Amen. And then number four was Marge. Right, it was giving, right. So number four was giving as we went through those. So just Ron, to remind everybody, uh, you know, uh, I know that that was a long series that we went through, but just, uh, you know, don't forget some of the things that you learn because you don't want to get in the habit of going through the motions, amen? But we want to remember the why uh, we do things in Jesus' name, amen? All right, hey, let's take a look at 2020. What is our theme this year? 2020 is a year of harvest, right? Uh, I like that uh, that other picture that you put up, the one that I think Tara sent, sent you, that it was like a harvesters at nighttime, which I thought was really cool. That was really neat. If you didn't see it, it's on the Facebook page. Uh, but it was, yeah, it was a bunch of harvesters going out at night with their lights on. And and it reminded me of that song. Um, I, I can't remember the name of it, but it just even talks about like when I'm sleeping, you're still doing stuff. When I, you, you know, I, I don't remember the name of that, but... Uh, how many of you guys know God still work in Jesus' name? And things are still happening, amen? And so uh, excited about that. Uh, so 2020 is, of course, a year of harvest. Isaiah, of course, does say, here he is, there it is. At least, it says, the least of you will become a what? A thousand, the smallest of mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. I will do this swiftly, amen? And so uh, we just encourage you to continue to keep inviting people to Forgiven Church, whether it's in Fort Wayne or down here in the, Wells County area, you know, nowadays, if you're within 30 minutes of a, of a drive to a church, uh, that's actually within your vicinity now. And so, because people drive that every day for work. Actually, some people drive further than that for work, you know, and so if you could drive that far for work, you can drive that far to go to a good church. And so we just want to encourage you to keep inviting people. And, uh, and, and if there's anybody watching right now that, that has never been here in person yet, uh, we invite you to come join us at one of our two locations, uh, Bluffton or Fort Wayne. So we are excited about uh, uh, growing here at Forgiven Church. Let's take a look at Matthew does, of course, say this. It says God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree and eagles build nests in it. Amen. And uh, we here at Forgiven Church, and as we've been saying for a while, we do have a huge vision here at Forgiven Church. It is not to stay the same. It is not to be small. It is not to be whatever, but it is to have a huge vision. How many of you guys know God's into growth? God's into big things, amen? Not, not just small things, but God is into big things. And uh, we are believing that Forgiven Church one day uh, will be a very, very big church in the natural uh, and have a lot of uh, eagles, a lot of leaders uh, a part of it. And we got a lot of leaders now, which I'm very thankful for because it, we need all the leaders we can get for all the people that will be coming in because they need to know what you know. In Jesus' name, amen. They, how many guys know it doesn't matter just what the pastors know? It matters what everybody else knows, too, and how we can encourage and build upon one another. Amen. Uh, let's take a look at why we're here, Forgiven Church. Let's go ahead and say this together. Forgiven Church is here to what? Love God, to love others, and discover and develop the greatness that's within each one of us. Amen. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it for all of you. There is greatness inside of every single one of you. 
Right, right? So go ahead and just smile at your neighbor and just tell them that's what Pastor Scott said and you need to just believe it. Amen. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good. Okay, so we are going on with our next lesson uh, tonight in, uh, here it is, the Believer's Authority, uh, what they didn't teach you in church or what you didn't learn in church. Very, very few people actually are taught about the Believer's Authority. So, so by a show of hands, how many of you were very familiar with the Believer's Authority before we started teaching on this? How many of you? Really? Okay, how many of you... Raise your hand if you were, like you're like, okay, wow, only a handful. See, that's why we're going through this kind of stuff. There, there, was, there was a bigger percentage up north that had, got, that had understood this uh, believer's authority than down here. So this, how many guys know this, this has been good, that we're learning this kind of stuff? Man, it is super, super important that we learn about this stuff. And tonight, I think a lot of you will get, definitely get excited about the topic we are going to be going through tonight. So we are going over lesson 16. And does everybody already have a handout? Are we all good? Is there anybody who's missing one? Yes, let me make sure. Everybody have something to write with? Yeah, okay, is everybody good? I need to get a drink of water really quick. All right. <laughs> it's always weird when I swallow, it makes me wonder. Maybe you can't hear it, but can people that are online, can they hear me swallow because of my mic? <laughs> so, can you hear me? Is that weird? Is that awkward? I don't know. Maybe should I swallow really hard on purpose just to get their attention? What do you think, honey? My wife just gave me, you are a dumb person look. Okay, all right. Moving right along. Here we go. Let's read this. The Lord blessed us and gave us the ability to procreate. This power and authority God gave us comes with responsibility. Therefore, you can pray until you're blue in the face, but a woman isn't going to get pregnant until she has a relationship with a man. And I'll explain that later, what that has to do with what we're going through, okay? Some of you just went, that was totally out of place, okay? <laughs> and we'll add the scriptures later on also. Here we go. <laughs> That's funny. God's word says to speak to your mountains. It's God's power, but he put it under our control. There are spiritual laws that in order to cooperate with them, we must use our authority as human beings. If we don't step out in faith to cooperate with God in these areas, they won't come to pass. We need to find out what's under our authority and start using it the way God intended. In the area of provision or finances, God's given us power to get wealth. God gave us power, an anointing, an ability to get wealth. Since God doesn't have money directly, he sends it to you through people. God impresses other people and people will be involved in getting you his supply. God gave you power to get wealth, so you must learn to use your authority to release that power. In order to see God's provision for you manifest, you must cooperate with the spiritual laws governing prosperity. God has promised to bless all the works of your hands. However, if you aren't set or excuse me, however, if you aren't setting your hands to something, God doesn't have anything to bless. You aren't going to see God begin to prosper you if you aren't working. If you're going to get into God's divine flow of provision, then you need to start doing some things to release that power and see this anointing begin to generate the income you need. The Lord said he would give back to you with the same measure that you used. It is not God who fails to answer our prayers. It is us who fail to take our authority and use it properly. All right. So what is our main focus going to be tonight? Yeah, we're going to be talking about provision. We're going to be talking about finances. Is there anybody who would like some more of that in their life? Okay, right on. Well, this is going to answer a lot of things. When it comes to why don't I have enough? Why isn't God answering my prayer? Why isn't God supplying my needs? Why isn't God? Because how many of you guys know in this series that we've been learning, uh, the believer's authority, that means responsibility is actually on who? It's on us. It's not 
on God. So before we get into reading this and then adding the scriptures uh, along with us tonight, just remember that the scripture said, along with Christ Jesus, God gave us everything that pertains to life and godliness, right? Everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been released. So God is not holding back on us. Contrary to what some people do think. Okay? God is not holding back. And we're going to kind of squash that mentality tonight that, that God wants some people wealthy and not others. That God wants some people poor and God wants some people rich. Right? How many of you know God is not a respecter of persons? Right? He's a respecter of what? His word or people doing what his word says to do. Amen. So I think the majority of us all raised our hands. And I'll just ask that question again. By the raising of your hands high enough to where I can see, uh, how many of you would like more resources in your life? Okay. I think that qualifies for everybody almost. Okay, good. So unless you can write a check every day for a million dollars, uh, you should be raising your hand. See, that, that's called the wealthy place when you're there. See, the wealthy places where you can write a check for a million dollars, but that doesn't affect your banking account because you have more coming in than what's going out. And that's actually what God wants for us. How many of you guys know God wants more coming in than what's going out? Okay, we'll, we'll show you in Scripture tonight if you don't believe pastor. That's okay. Well, just keep going here. All right, here we go. The Lord blessed us and gave us the ability to procreate. Genesis 1, 27 and 28, a couple translations. Of course, we've gone over this several times earlier in this series. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Next says, thank you. So God made man like his maker, like God did God make man, man did made, he, excuse me, and made did he make them. And God blessed them and told them, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. You are masters of the fish and birds and of all the animals. And I think you got the next translation here. It's really good. God created human beings. He created them godlike, right? Little g, not big g, godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge, be responsible for the fish in the sea and the birds of the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth, right? Notice he said to prosper, right? Not be in poverty, but to prosper. Very important. Remember 3 John 2 says what? Who can quote it? Above all things, I wish or I desire that you would prosper and be in health even as your, right, even as your soul prospers, right? So if you don't know it's the will of God for you to prosper, then there's a good chance that you're not going to prosper, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by Right, the word. Not what Pastor Scott says, but by what the word of God says. It doesn't matter what Pastor Scott says. Right. It matters what God says. Because his word is final authority over every situation in and through our lives. Right, here we go. This power and authority God gave us comes with responsibility. Therefore, we can pray until we are blue in the face. But a woman isn't going to get pregnant until she has a relationship with a man. So let me explain that. What does that have to do with prosperity? Well, actually nothing has to do with multiplication. But the analogy is this. So there are a lot of Christians that are out there. I would say the majority of them from the ones that I've met. And they are the ones that are saying, God bless me. God prosper me. God give me money. God give me money. God give me money. But they're not doing anything in agreement with his word to have money multiplied in their life. Just as a woman could sit there and say, God, make me pregnant. God, gave me, make me pregnant. God, make me pregnant. 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 Right? Fluence of speech. Right? 
How many of you guys know there is only one immaculate conception? And that's all there will ever be. So any woman who says, well, I don't like men, but I want kids. God, let me be pregnant. It will never happen. Right? What God's going to say is you need to get married. And then you need to like the guy you married. And have kids. It's called the birds and the bees. Yeah. Right? right? How many of you guys all remember that in grade school? <laughs> well, or is it middle school they teach that nowadays? When do they teach that? Third. Oh, is it third grade? <laughs> nowadays, it's probably kindergarten the way things are going. I mean, jeez. But seriously, all right, so what that's saying is, is, is oh, you can say all day, all day long, God, give me money, God, give me money, God, give me money. But how many of you guys know we could be stopping things or we can stop the provision of money to come by not doing what God told us to already do in his word right same thing as a woman who wants to get pregnant well guess what you got to find yourself a man now I look don't get super spiritual on me go yeah you could have artificial insemination now look just let's settle with the point all right let's just know what we're talking about here there are certain dynamics certain laws that have to work okay you need a male sperm to get pregnant, ladies. We'll just end it with that one, amen? You got to have those things working together. Just as we need to have natural things working together with spiritual laws, okay? And there are actually spiritual laws governing finances also, okay? And that's some of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight. So uh, just general question. The Lord blessed us and gave us what kind of ability? Right, the ability to procreate. Right? Because remember, we are created in whose image and likeness again? Right. It is God's is the right answer. Not apes, not monkeys, but God's. I know we all know that, but I'm just telling you, it's amazing what you still see on television. I was watching a show the other day that they were talking about how the earth is billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of years old. And the more that they find out that doesn't fit in their thinking, they just got to add more age to the to the, to earth. How would they know? Yeah, exactly. How would they know? Was anybody there then? Yeah. Exactly. But but you know they're the scientists, and because you know they have they have a degree behind their name, they know it all. All right, here we go. Uh, Moon right along says this. What did this power and authority God gave us come with? It came with what? Right, responsibility to be able to procreate. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you would say if you're going to have a lot of money, you probably ought to have some responsibility also? Yes, yes you need to. Because he who's faithful with little will then be, yes, faithful or ruler with much. Right? Don't tell me you're going to be faithful with a billion dollars when you're not faithful with a hundred. Okay, that could be a whole other subject, but we ain't going to go there right yep. Even though I went there just a little bit to get you to think about it. Okay, uh, second section here. Didn't have a lot of scriptures in that first one, but here we go. God's word says to speak to our mountain, right? Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Here it says, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they, what? Say. What they say. Yeah, everybody say, say. What they say will happen, it will be done for them, period. Well, I don't believe that. Well, that's why it doesn't work for you. But guess who said this? Yes, God said it, but who else? Right, Jesus said it. And how many of you guys know, you know, Jesus, or God started it and Jesus backed it up? Right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And then when it was dark, and it was dark, and he said, light be, and then all of a sudden, what? Light was, right? God started it, and so did Jesus. Jesus backed it up. He was, he was a speaker, right? He was a uh, name it, claim it, blab it, grab it group. Yep. If you don't like that, you disagree with that, well, that, they're the ones that started it, right? You might be a doubter and a do without her. That's your choice. I prefer the blab it, grab it. Name it, claim it, because he said we could. Next says this. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Right? 
So if it didn't work, was it God's fault? It was our fault, wasn't it? There's a chance that we had even 1% doubt. He said, no doubt. Fully persuaded that what we're going to say is going to happen and it will happen. Next translation does say, Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him, period. No comma, but anywhere there. Right? It will be done for him, period. Now, when it comes to resources, a lot of people, they just think it's just too weird to talk about money or to even speak money to come in. Did you know money is a thing? That yes is the right answer, right? Currency, right? That's a thing. Now I know sometimes it's on credit cards and says that, but if we're talking about cash and we're talking about coins, whatever it is, it is a thing, right? Remember, Jesus spoke to things. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves, and they obeyed him. Jesus said you could speak to this mountain, and it will obey you. Remember what happened before this? What did, what did Jesus end up doing earlier before this? He spoke to a fig tree. Remember, Jesus spoke to the fig tree, cursed it, and it died. And the disciples were shocked. Look, Master, the fig tree you cursed withered up and died. And Jesus is like, that ain't no big deal. That was easy. See that mountain over there? Tell it to go jump in a lake and it'll do it. That's basically what the message translation says, right? And see, a lot of people, they don't want to speak to their checkbook. They don't want to speak to their savings account. They don't want to speak to a raise. They don't want to speak any of that stuff into existence because they think that's just too weird. Well, we know that if you speak things, they are seeds. And guess what? We've got to give God something to work with. Amen. So if you keep saying, I'm never going to get a raise, well, guess what? then you're never probably going to get a raise. Or if you always say, well, I always get the smallest raises here. I never get a big raise. Guess what you're always going to get probably? A small raise. You're just getting whatever you say, like the Bible says. And it works the majority of the time, right? Continue reading, it says this. It's God's power, but he put it under our control. There are spiritual laws that in order to cooperate with them, we must use our authority as human beings. If we don't step out in faith to cooperate with God in these areas, they won't come to pass. We need to find out what's under our authority and start using it the way God intended. All right, a couple general questions. According to the scripture we just read, what does God's word say we are to speak to? Right, our mountains, right? Just like he said, speak to that mountain, we can speak to our mountains in our life, right? And tell things to get the hell out. Because usually those obstacles, that's where they come from, right? Because usually we're talking about God about all the great big things that we want to do. And how many of you guys know the enemy can hear that also, right? So a lot of times he's going to want to put roadblocks speed bumps, whatever, in your way. And guess what? Sometimes you've got to command those things to get out of there in Jesus' name. Right? Very, very, very important that we understand that kind of stuff. Uh, next thing is this. What must we use our authority as human beings to cooperate with? Right. Spiritual laws. Okay? Now, how many of you would agree that there are natural laws? Right? An example of a natural law would be gravity. How many of you know gravity works? If you don't believe so, go to a tall building. If you walk off, you will fall. And you cannot sit there and say, God, catch me. Seriously. Because you're not supposed to put the Lord God, God, thy God to the test. Right? Right? That's kind of like what Satan was trying to do to Jesus. Right? You walk off a tall building, you're going to go down. Unless you have this law of lift. Because there's a natural law, which is the law of lift, that supersedes the law of gravity, right? Planes have it, right? So when you're going like this, all of a sudden that law of lift kicks in and it overrides the law of gravity, right? 
Very important that we understand that stuff. Well, the thing about it is also when it comes to spiritual laws. Spiritual laws will override natural laws. Okay? Most of us, I think we remember this, that this realm was created by what? The spiritual realm. Right? This natural realm was created by the spiritual realm. And so we are so focused on our five senses in this realm, which makes this realm so real. But if we would focus on the spiritual realm with our spiritual senses, did you know, there, did you know we actually have spiritual senses? Yeah. We actually do. The Bible talks about it. So if we would focus on the spiritual realm with our spiritual senses, that realm created this realm, which means that realm has got laws that will override this realm. That's why we want things happening that's called supernatural. Right? Where things super in the supernatural realm override things here in this natural realm, in the spiritual realm, right? Very important that we understand some of that stuff. Here we go. Moving right along, says this. Oh, uh, where am I at? Oh, I think we just finished that, didn't we? Okay, are we in our third section, right? Here we go. In the area of provision or finances, God has given us power to get wealth. Here we go, Deuteronomy 8, 18. Let's take a look at that. But remember the Lord, your God. Didn't come from pastor, didn't come from anybody. It came from God, right? For it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. And so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Next translation says, thank you. It says, always remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to become rich. Well, that's nice. And he does it to fulfill his promise to your who? To your ancestors. So how many of you guys remember... Uh, there was this guy called Father Abraham, yeah. right? And if you remember Abraham, was Abraham a wealthy guy? Oh, yeah. That dude has some serious dinero, right? And he was blessed by God, right? And the Bible says now in the New Testament that we are what? Abraham's what? Seed or Abraham's offspring, even spiritually, right? We call him Father Abraham, but he made a promise. He says, however I blessed you will also be passed down through all the generations to come. And that also means to us, right? But see, and so how many of you guys are thankful for Father Abraham's, you know, obedience, right? Because of somebody's obedience, the blessing continued, right? Well, guess what? There was another guy. We would all call him our big brother, our big spiritual brother. His name is Jesus. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus, who was rich. You guys remember the Bible saying that? It says Jesus was rich. We're talking financially here, not spiritually rich, money-wise. Remember, he had a full group of 12 going with him everywhere. Had a full-time treasurer, right? So it says, though he was rich, for your sakes or our sakes, he became poor. Yeah, you're good. Why? Why does it say after that? So what? So that you might become rich. Hmm. Thank God for Father Abraham's obedience that the blessings flow down upon us, right? But think about Jesus' obedience. Jesus' obedience that though he was rich, he became poor, right? So that you might become rich. He took our place. So we don't have to live in poverty. So we don't have to struggle day in and day out and day in and day out. So uh, some people don't like it when I say this, but see, that's why I think a vow of poverty is not godly. Why? Because Jesus died so you could have money. And if you are poor, how can you really bless people with an abundance of money if you don't have it? God blesses us to be a what? 
a blessing, right? We are blessed to be a blessing. It's not about hoarding it up for ourselves. God blesses us to be a blessing. And actually, when, when, when you actually you study it out in the original, you are actually, you, you have the blessing actually that's on you. And see, when you have the blessing that's on you, it then creates all these other blessings that flow in your life from the blessing, if that makes any sense. So if one, someone says, I'm blessed, man, you, man you, yeah, if you're blessed, then guess what? Then you ought to start walking in some abundance and you ought to start expecting it. Because if you don't expect it, then there's a good chance if it shows up, you, first of all, you wouldn't be looking for it, so you wouldn't have any idea it was yours. It's going to go right on by, if that makes any sense to everybody, Right? See, it's important that you, that you understand what you're believing God for and that you actually have a right to have more than what you have right now. Now, I'm not saying that for selfish reasons. I am saying that for reasons to be a blessing to other people. Okay? Is there anybody in here, and, 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 and this is not a, but I mean, and if you don't want to, that's fine. I don't know why, but is there any of you that would love to be able to write a million dollar check to some organization, like, like, like whether it's feeding children or, or digging wells somewhere for, 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 for people who don't have clean water in a country somewhere or just where, how many of you guys would say, I would like to be able to do that? Yeah, I would love to be able to do that. You know what? God would probably love for you to be able to do that too. And you know what? I know there are people that say, well, God doesn't want me to do that. He doesn't want me to write a check over $100. I think that's shallow thinking. I really do because we serve the God that is more than enough. So if you write that check for a million dollars or when you write, let me say that for some of you, when you write that check for a million dollars, <laughs> not if, but when you write that check for a million dollars, you'll have still enough left over for you. Right? And one thing, one, oh man, one thing I loved that I heard one time, I used to, and thank God I have been delivered. Thank you, Jesus. I used to have a problem with Christians having nice stuff. I did. In my early days of, of my Christian walk, I, I started hearing about what some people would consider the prosperity gospel, and, 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 but they gave me the wrong slant on it. And I, I tell you, I got mad at these Christians, these Christian businessmen who would, who would have a, a $10,000 Rolex. How dare they? Who do they think they are that they can have a $10,000 Rolex? Don't you know they could sell that watch and feed a whole lot of kids? I'm just telling you, that's the way I thought. You know why? Because that's the way people trained me to think. Yeah. That was not the way the Bible trained me to think. That's the way unbelieving or poor people that were Christians taught me to think. I'm just, I'm just shooting straight with you. And you know what? That was good until all of a sudden I started reading the Bible for myself. And I started seeing some things. And I started finding out that my Lord and Savior, who they told me was poor... Yeah, they told me. Now, now, how many of you guys know he was poor at one time? Yeah. When was it? Yeah, it was when he was on the cross. Yeah, but after that, he rose victorious king of kings, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, but he became poor so that we might become rich, right? But I'm telling you, I, I used to always think that, I used to think, who are these people that have this? Who are this? And who's this? I cannot believe how selfish they are until I ended up finding out that these people give more money than most of these griping, complaining, poor people all combined together. You know, and I remember when we were with Pastor Godot one time, and, uh, and he was, we just had a nice tour of his house, a nice tour of his garage, his eight-car garage or whatever it was, and his tour of his, uh, uh, what barn, Escalade barn, what kind of barn was it that he had with the horses? horse barns with these horses and all this other kind of stuff. And he's showing us, showing me cat, class, class, these classic cars and all this stuff. And, you know, and then we got a drive in the $350,000 Bentley. Well, I can't believe he would spend his own money in a $350,000 Bentley. Who does he think he is? He didn't. 
People bought it for him as a gift. He didn't spend his own money on it. He was blessed with it. And see, some of the stuff, though, that he was sharing with us, though, is he says, son, daughter, the thing about it is, is what we have here is not very much compared to what we've given. He said, if people had any idea the millions of dollars we have given that we have sown, they would probably change their tune. How many of you guys know God's faithful to his word? So faithful to his word, amen? If he's done it for one, he'll do it for another one, amen? But God gives you the ability, right, to get wealth. Here we are. Uh, where are we at here? Verse... All right, God gave us power and anointing and ability to get wealth. Is that where we're at? Sounds good to me. Since God doesn't have money directly, he sends it to us through people, right? Luke 6, 38, here we go. Most of us can quote this. Give and it will be given to you, period. No comma but, right? A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And everybody said, yeah, I say amen. You know what that means? That, that's opportunity is what that means. Yeah. That, that, that to me says opportunity all over it. Right? Based off the measure. Next says this. Next. Did you have another? Oh, thank you very much. For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you, right? Do you notice he's talking about that there's going to be a whole lot left? I like that. Is there anybody else who likes that? Yeah. Right, right. So you give and guess what? It comes back more than what you gave, and it's multiplied so much more that it starts running over. That, that's the kind of God that we have, the God that's what? More than enough, right? Not, not just enough, but more than enough, right? Next says, give away your life. You'll find life given back, not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting, is the way generosity begets generosity, right? And then we've got the amplified give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will they pour into the pouch formed by, here we go, the bosom of your robe and used, right, as a bag. For with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use, when you confer benefits to on others, it will be measured back to you, right? So when you bless other people, guess what? You can expect back. Blessing. And you know what? That is not selfish. It's called gospel. It's called good news. It's called my father in heaven. God just says, when you bless other people, you can just go and expect, I'm going to multiply that back to you. You can count on it. He said it, not me. That is not a selfish thing. That is a absolutely good thing on that, right? But how many of you guys know God is also another? What I mean by that is when you return tithes and offerings, right? So when you return tithes and offerings, how many guys know you're giving to God? And he's another. And he said, whenever you give to others and he's another, he's going to multiply that back even unto you. This is not just saying just other people. But guess what? When you give tithes and offerings and then you bless other people with other stuff, man, you just ought to start expecting it to start coming back and coming back and coming back and coming back. And by the way, we are in a year of what? We are in a year of harvest, so you ought to be expecting this, not just from pastor, but what God says, amen. Moving right along says this, God impresses other people and they will be involved in getting his supply or getting us his supply. God gave us power to get wealth, so we must learn to use our authority to release that power. Now, Luke 6, 38 is a natural and spiritual principle. Give and it will be given. Now, that will even work for unbelievers. Give and it will be given. It just works. That's just the way that it is. Give and it will be given. See, when you understand that, 
give and it will be given, then you have an attitude of expectation to see something. What would that also be called, having that expectation? That'd be called what? Faith. That'd be faith, right? But if you say, well, I'm going to give and I'm never going to see it again, what would that be called? Doubt and unbelief. Guess what? You're not going to receive anything then. And you literally just gave away your money, not invested your money or sowed your money, if that makes any sense to everybody. Super important that, that we understand that, right? Here we go. Uh, a couple of general questions on this. When we read Deuteronomy 8, 18, Luke 6, 38, what did God give us to get wealth? What was it? Three things. All right. What was the first one? Power, right? Next was what? Anointing and what? The ability to what? To get wealth. He gave you power. He gave you an anointing and an ability to get wealth. Now, how many of you guys know you need to keep getting this to get this? Or how do I say you need to keep doing this till you see it manifest in your life? Don't say, well, I tried this once and it didn't work. Actually, I, I, gave, it a, 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 I gave God another chance. I tried it twice and it didn't work. Look, just because you gave up doesn't mean God did. I mean, I'm just telling you, this stuff works. We have seen it in people's lives. Uh, who, who's that really rich billionaire that we, that we talked to that's got his own currency? Peter Daniels, right, Peter Daniels. Some of you guys are looking at me like, what? What are you talking about? So uh, Peter Daniels is a guy from, uh, was it New Zealand now? New Zealand, Australia, somewhere around there or something like that. Uh, I don't know if he still lives there, or lives there or not, but um, this guy, uh, very wealthy, this guy gives um, gold to his grandkids for Christmas. And I'm not talking about gold dust. We're talking bricks. That would be nice. That would be nice. I mean, could you imagine that? <laughs> kids seeing that. What am I going to do with this? I got 50 of them already over here. Come on, really? Wait till you get older, right? Okay. But this guy uh, filed bankruptcy how many times? Do you remember? Man, it was, I think it was like eight or nine times or something like that. He filed bankruptcy. He knew God's principles and he kept stepping out. And, he, and, and, and it, it would, didn't work the way it was supposed to be. And he filed bankruptcy. He tried something else again with a little bit of tweaking. Didn't work. Tried something else again. A little bit. Didn't work. It was, like, it was something like eight times or whatever it was. I can't remember without uh, reading the book. But yeah, filed bankruptcy that many times. And God said, don't quit. Don't give up. Keep going. And when he tried that next time, everything exploded. Everything totally exploded. And the thing about it was is, is when he was doing it, when I think it was on the last time he said, God, give me your wisdom to do this thing right this time. And God gave him the wisdom to do it right this time, and everything exploded. It exploded so much, he had businesses on multiple, in multiple countries. That's why he ended up starting his own currency. Because when you start doing an exchange from one currency to another currency, you lose money and lose value. Well, he was able to get his own currency through all of his business where he didn't lose all of that exchange going on. And when he goes to countries, he meets with kings, he meets with princesses, he meets with the governors, the, the head persons, heads of state. When he goes to those, God took him from, oh, it was almost like the Joseph situation where he went from like the, the pan, or the, or the, the, the dungeon to the penthouse like like that when everything took off see the thing about it is is god's not a respecter of people either and see now his whole thing now that he's doing i don't can't even remember the name of the program but he's got a program out right now where his whole goal is to make so many millionaires before he dies that's his whole goal so he's a multi 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 billionaire and now he's got a program out there where he trains people just like us, average, ordinary people that would dare to believe God and dare to believe his word and teaches them to become multi, multi-millionaires for the kingdom of God. And that is one of his requirements. 
The whole thing is, is why do you want to make money? If it's to advance the kingdom of God, then, that, then that's the number one qualification. If it's about you to get your toys and to be rich, then you, then you, won't, you won't get in. But if it's about advancing the kingdom of God, he will get you there. And he's had many people already get there. And I, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome that, that you're supposed to be able to teach and train people that way. But the thing about us is he didn't give up, right? This stuff works if you keep doing it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for that. God is good. All right. Uh, where are we at, everybody? We're on four? Section four? Did I ask you the question? Yeah. Okay, we went over that. Oh, yeah. The, the next question was, of course, how does God send money to us? Right, through people. Right? How many of you guys know they don't come, it doesn't come from the stork? No. Right? No, it don't come from the... Yeah, you've been looking in the wrong place, Brian. No wonder you ain't got... No, I'm just kidding, buddy. <laughs> Where's my money? No, right. Right, it comes through people. Now, some people, they're thinking, oh, well, I wish other people... Did you know it, that's coming through your boss? That's coming through your job? But the thing about it is, if you start your own business, then guess what? You become your own employer. Yes. Right? And you can do that. And then you can say, God, let's take the limits off of this thing and let's go with this thing in Jesus' name, right? And so God brings people to bring you money. And the thing about it is, is he will use people that you don't think. That's the weird stuff about it. See, I have been guilty. I am confessing in front of you, in front of the whole world, everybody watching now. There have been times where, where uh, we've, had, we've had real, real tight times here at Forgiven Church. Uh, I mean, so tight where I was almost like having to go out and get, a, get another job because the church couldn't support uh, me being here full time. And so at times like that, you know what I'm thinking? God, God, would you just speak to so-and-so who is a multi, multi, multi-millionaire? God, why don't you just give him a hint? Why don't you just let him know about our situation? How many of you guys know that's what most people would do? Oh, you wouldn't do that? Y'all look at me, y'all really say, oh, no, I wouldn't do that, no, yeah. Yeah, but see, the problem is, is you know what, you know what I'm doing in that time? I'm making that person my source. When I say, God, you need to speak to them, I'm saying that person's my source. When God's like, yeah, but I want it to come through this person over here. See, what we got to do is we just got to take the limits off of God and just say, okay, God, you know what I need. I've already asked for it. So, Lord, you can just speak to whoever you want to speak to. I am good with it. Amen. Amen. Now, if it comes to the point where we need to go fishing and get a coin out of a fish's mouth, so be it. But God will get the money to you. How, how many of you guys remember that happened in the Bible? Yeah. Right? Right? He said, he said, there'll be enough for your taxes and mine. I mean, can you imagine? Could you imagine doing that? Yeah. Jesus is like, go fishing. The first catch, fish you catch is going to be coin in there. And you've got to have some faith to go throw that bobber in. You know what I mean? But guess what? God will get the money to you. And the thing about it is, is like I say, he's not going to drop it right out of heaven. It's all around. It's all on this earth. God, but God owns everything. He knows where all the silver is. He knows where all the gold is. He knows where all the oil reserves are at that's never been tapped. He knows where all this kind of stuff is. Amen? And, and, and we just got to trust him that he knows where stuff's at that, that nobody's ever found before in Jesus' name. Amen. Very important. All right, here we go. Fourth section here. It says this. In order to see God's provision for us manifest, we must cooperate with the spiritual law governing prosperity. God has promised to bless all the work of our hands. Deuteronomy 28, 8 and 12 says what? It said, the Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hands to. That's good news. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you, right? Verse 12 says, the Lord will open up the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. How many of you would like to be the lender and not the borrower? Yeah. yeah. See, see it's, nice, it's nice to be able to actually, it's nice to be able to give people money, but it's actually also wise to be a business person and lend, and then on, on when it comes back, you get interest back with that. There is nothing wrong with that. It's even in the Bible, right? That's a good place to be, to be the lender and not the borrower, 
Can I, can I just declare in Jesus' name that that's where you all be someday in Jesus' name? That you'll all be lenders and not borrowers in Jesus' name? Amen. I said it. It's up to you. See, if you come in agreement, the Bible says if any two come to agreement, they'll have whatever they agree upon. So I, I, I'm agreeing at, at Forgiven Church, whether this branch or that branch, that we've got lenders in Jesus' name. Because there's people that would dare to trust God to go to the unlimited in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, next says this. The Lord will bless you with good crops and healthy cattle and prosper everything you do when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you. He will open up to you his wonderful treasury of rain in the heavens to give you fine crops every season. He will bless everything you do and you shall lend in many nations but shall not borrow from them. See, I, that's what I want people to see when, when they look at my life and at the end of my life. At the end of our lives, I want them to say, man, everything that pastors did, man, just worked. Man, it just worked. God just, God's blessing was just on them. And all we could just th- sit there and say, we just did what his word said, and we gave God all the credit. Because that's what he really kind of wants, to be honest with you. He, just want, he wants to be able to blow you. He wants to be so good he just wants to blow your minds. To where you didn't take any credit at all. But God gets all the glory for the abundance that's in your life. Amen. Because remember when he talked about that not too long after he says, so when you're living in your fancy houses and all your stuff, don't forget who it was that God gave you the ability to get wealth. Because that happens to a lot of people when they hear, when they hear about how God blesses them. Then, then all of a sudden they forget that it was God that blessed them. And they, and they stopped doing the stuff that got them where they were. And they stopped giving God credit. Amen. How many of you guys know we got to give God credit? Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's why, we, that's why you got to be a part of something bigger uh, than yourself. You got to be a part of something bigger. That way God gets all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. However, if we aren't sending, or excuse me, however, if we aren't setting our hands to something, God doesn't have anything to bless. We aren't going to see God begin to prosper us if we aren't working. 2 Thessalonians 3.10. Look what it says here. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. I know people don't like that, but that's Bible. And it's the book for you and it's the book for me. Next says, here it is. Even while we were still here with you, we gave you this rule. He who does not work shall not eat. Next. Don't you remember the rule we had when we lived with you? If you don't work, you don't eat. Period. You know, it's amazing that mamas will do that sometimes when it comes to their kids. You want to eat tonight? You better get your chores done. Because you ain't eating nothing until that's done. Some of you are like, yeah, I, I remember that happening to me. Yes, I remember. But you know what? There's too many lazy people in the world. Okay, all right. It's okay to say amen to that. Because there is. There's too many people living off the government. Because the government doesn't understand this. See, how many of you guys know if you are, are in the natural unable to work, maybe handicapped, whatever reason, that you, you're just unable to work. I get that. I totally get that. But you know what? If you're too lazy to get off your butt to go flip a burger or toss fries or something like that because you got a pride problem, then you can go hungry. Mm-hmm. Pastor, you're not supposed to say that. You're supposed to feed the, 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 those people that, no, that's not true. Right. That is not true. Because it's amazing, you'll find, you'll find money for cigarettes. Oh, wait, did I just go there? I did, didn't I? It's amazing, they'll find money for other things, but then they want to come ask you for money and they don't want to work. Like I'm, I'm that, look, I'm just real big on this. I, 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 me, I, I said it last night, I'll say it again publicly, okay? Lazy people and me just don't get along very well. Is that okay? I, I just now, if you're lazy in here, don't take it personally. But I just said, me and lazy people just don't get along very well. Man, you got to get up and you got to go to work. You got to do something. 
You know why? Because this it's a spiritual principle, man. You got to give God something to work with. Yeah. You know, and too many people in America, they all want a free handout. They all want the government to take care of them. You know, they all want they all want everybody who's working for a living and paying taxes to take care of them when they won't do nothing. Yeah. Oh wait. Starting to sound like a rally here, isn't it? Or something like that. But I'm just being honest with you. That's just where I'm at. Don't hate me. Just it's Bible. I'm just, I'm just doing this kind of thing. Should we group hug now? Would that be a good time? <laughs> okay. All right, moving right along. Time to move along, honey. She's giving me the nod, definitely. Here we go. It says, if we are going to uh, get in God's divine flow of provision, then we need to start doing some things to release that power and to see this anointing begin to generate the income we need. The Lord said he would give back to us with the same measure that we use. Or is that Luke 6, 38 again? We'll look at that again, right? Give and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over. It will be poured into your lap for the measure you use. It will be measured to you, right? Remember, he didn't say, the amount of money but he said it was the what the the measure of the amount right because every single one every one of us in here is at a different place financially i i i'm not saying that because i know how much money y'all make i just know that we are all at different places financially right you know why Let, let's say let's say you made the same amount of money as you did right but guess what her kids are out, out of the house. Yours are still in the house. Your, your cost of living could be a little bit, well, sometimes they come back, so I don't know. I mean, because <laughs> we've had them come back. Right, we've had them come back every now and then, too. I guess i got to clarify that, but everybody's, everybody's different. You know, one kid versus three kids, three kids are going to cost more money than one kid. And $100 is going to cost a little bit different, right? But it's different on the measure. But if you got $1,000, man, $1,000, somebody could write a check for $1,000 and that'd be totally huge for them, right? Versus somebody could write $1,000 and it'd be no big deal. It could be just pennies to them, right? Because it's based off the measure, right? The percentage is what he's talking about. It's the percentage. It's not the exact amount. It's the percentage uh, that we're talking about. Does that make sense to everybody? I mean, I'm, I remember there, there, see, when he says based off the measure, right? So let me ask you a question. How many of you would say if you had $800 left in your checking account and you wrote a check for like $750 out of that $800, how many of you would say that would be a pretty big measure? Yeah. See, some of you are like, that's stupid. That, what are you, that's nuts. Wow, that's nuts. Done it. Yeah, done it. And you've all done it too. See, some people went, we did. We did. Because we were, there were times when it was so tight here, we needed God to bust out and bust out big. And we needed, some, we needed some serious money to come in. Just being honest with you. Now, I'm not telling you I wrote a check by myself. I got it confirmed by other people. But they said, yeah, we got to sow a seed. And you know what we did? We sowed based off of a measure. Pastor, are you telling me that we had $800 in our church checking account and you wrote a check for $750? Are you kidding me? No, actually, it was a little bit different than that, but that, it was about that same percentage, about that same, same, uh, same what percentage, so to speak. There was one time the Lord told us to pay everything that was in this one account and sow it. Right? Yep. Right? Look, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you. When you got, see, until you run a business or church bills like what we have coming every month on a big scale and, and, and your checking account's going down, 
man, you're saying, Lord, we need you totally to intervene. And how many of you guys know if you have a need, you, sow a, seed. you sow a seed. But what kind of seed are you sowing? What kind of measure are you sowing? See, we see, God, we need you to show up. We need you to show up big. And there were, there were a couple times where he said, this account right here, sow it all. And we did. And you know what? It was within a week or two, we had huge amounts of resources come in. Amen. All from unexpected sources. I'm just telling you. True? True? I, 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 they're, they're the ones that do the checking accounts a lot, so I, that's why I'm bearing it fine off of them. See, some people, they would say, Pastor, that's foolishness. I'm never giving another penny to your organization ever again. That's your choice. Right now, we're in the best place we've ever been. Even after COVID-19. And we're about to, pretty soon, write a check for about $50,000 for our parking lot. That's awesome. How many of you guys think that's pretty awesome? Yeah. But you know what? We're, we're not just telling you guys, oh, you got to do this. No, we do this stuff too. With our own personal lives and as the church stewardships also. And if we got to talk to our trustees about something, we'll talk to our trustees about something. Because we got to be doers of the word too. Amen. Not, just, not, just, not just speaking it, but we've got to do it also. We got to live by faith, right? Amen. Amen. We just got to trust God also. Amen. Praise God. This is a good place to sow, everybody. Because God, 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 God does what his word says. Moving right along, it says this. Uh, it is not God who fails to answer our prayers. It is, it, is who, it is us who fails to take our authority and use it properly, right? When it comes to Luke 6, 38, when it says given, it will be given to you, how does it begin? How does that, the very first words, what? Yeah. Which means it's whose responsibility? Our it's our responsibility. Now, question for you. Now, I think we are all at least can answer this one in math. How many of you guys were good in math? How many of you were bad in math? Okay. So about 50-50. About 50-50. All right. But let's see. Let's see if we can all get this right. Okay. We only got a couple teachers in here. Back it up. All right. So we have about 50% of you said you were bad in math. The other 50% of you said you're good in math. Here we go. Given it will be given to you. So 1,000 times zero is what? Is there anybody who thought something besides zero? Right, it's all, it's all zero, right? How about a million? How about a million times zero? What is that? Zero. It's still zero. We got to give God something to work with. We got to give him seed, right? And we also got to do something. And we got to remember that when he who is faithful with little, they will be faithful and rulers over much right my wife and I we we've seen people come into money people come we've seen people come into money and I remember them saying oh well when I get that money I'm going to give to the church <laughs> right is that true we've heard it I could I think of three people right now they're no longer with us they left right after the money came but they said, when we, hey, when we come into that money, first thing we're going to do is give to the church. But you know what? You look at their giving record, and it's squat. And, I'm, and, and you know what? I'm not saying, well, because we didn't agree with them that it didn't come in. No, we just knew they weren't people of their word. And guess what? When they, when they came in, one of them was inheritance. Another one was insurance. Another one was this. When they came in the money, they left. And you know what I, why I think they left, to be honest with you? Because they couldn't stand look at me in the face. I'm just being honest with you. Because if I tell somebody I'm going to give a chunk of money, and when that, when that shows up, and then you don't do it, it'd be hard to see them all the time. Yeah, right. Now, do we still love them? Yeah. They aren't our source. God's our source. Yeah. But I tell you, don't say you're going to do something. Just do it. Right. Amen. 
That's what I'm saying. Brings back those old good times, don't it, hon? <laughs> She's like, why'd you have to bring that up? Yeah, but it, it's just true. Just true. So when you think you look at people and say, hey, when I come in this money and you see that they got a big giving record, yeah, a good chance that's definitely going to happen in Jesus' name. But I do believe this. God knows where your heart is. And I know if God knows where your heart is, then he can get you to be where you need to be. And I tell you, little by little by little by little by little by little by little and watch it grow in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, God's will is prosperity for every single person. Every single person. And if we would just have that light bulb go on and just say, all right, Lord, let's do this thing. Kind of, kind of like uh, Peter Daniels. God doesn't love Peter Daniels any more than he loves us. Peter Daniels, he could just trust him with those resources. So he brought it in. Amen. You guys received that tonight? Pretty good. Huh? Good teaching. Amen. Father, I thank you so very much for your word. Thank you for the truth that is in your word, your truth that sets us free. I thank you, Lord, that if there's anything that's been said tonight that would challenge us or make us uh, think outside of our box, Lord, I am thankful for that. Lord, I don't want to settle with where I'm at, and I don't think anybody else wants to settle with where they're at in here or those even watching online, Lord. But Lord, I thank you that you are El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. You are the God that is uh, the God of abundance. You said that you sent Jesus that we would come and have life and life more abundantly, Lord, till it overflows, Lord. And so I just want to give you thanks and praise and honor and glory that there would be people that would choose to step out in faith and step out on your word the most sure thing that never fails lord i thank you and i praise you lord because it's about expanding your kingdom that's ultimately what it's all about about resources coming in to be able to expand your kingdom and so we give you all the thanks the praise the honor and the glory for it this night in jesus name and everybody said Amen. Amen. All right. Well, God is still good. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, it's what, kind, what time is it? Giving. It's giving time. All right. Happy, cheerful givers. Right, right, right. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hand up high. We'll make sure the ushers get one to you. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, anybody else? I'm whirling up Blanca over here. All right, anybody else? Everybody got one? Everybody got one in the back? Okay. We got that video back there? Let's watch. Trust.
dude, he brought the pie. That kind of gets the point across, doesn't it? Yeah, but how many of you guys know who's supposed to get the first slice? God gets the first slice called what again? Right, it's called the tithe, right? God gets the first slice. Even though he owns everything, it's kind of like God owns, it's God's pie, right? We won't give him the first slice. It's not like a birthday boy. Gentlemen, all right, did we miss anybody? Anybody? Brother Merlin here? Anybody else? All right, let's bring them up, guys. Let's give thanks. How you doing? Good. good. How you doing? Good. Awesome. That's good. All right. Father God, we just thank you so much that you gave Jesus for us. And Lord, we know that with Jesus came everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. And so, Lord, we thank you that you said in your word also to return the tithes and give offerings. And so we give to you right now. And we thank you as you receive these, you promised you would multiply this back into our life. And we thank you that you're multiplying this back into our life, that we would have even more to be a blessing to other people, Lord. And thank you, Lord, as the money comes through, there's plenty left for us. And we just want to worship you, honor you with us now, with these tithes and these offerings. And we thank you that these are well spent here, Lord. And we also thank you for the continual wisdom of spending the rest of of our resources, Lord, the rest of, of what you have given us, Lord, wisely, that all we do with all we have, we would definitely glorify you, and we give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory one more time in Jesus' name, and all the saints said, amen. All right, thank you guys, appreciate it, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. It's good to see you, good to see y'all looking good, and uh, don't forget the sunblock. If you go outside... If you go outside this week, don't forget the sunblock, right? Because we don't want everybody glowing in church on Sunday, right? Okay, <laughs> see you later. Have a great one. Bye-bye.